I think that there's a bit of a risk off reason for owning Bitcoin emanating from the emerging markets. We've seen in Argentina with the new administration there, I, I think the, the, the currency, I mean, they made official what the black market already knew, that the currency was worth half of what it w was reported at Lee worth. So I think we're getting those warning signals. I also think, you know, yesterday we got the Swiss bank cutting rates, which was a big surprise. The UK turning a little more dovish. The Fed now a little more dovish. Why? What are they seeing out there? Um, and so many people think of Bitcoin as a risk on asset, and it certainly has traded over, uh, like that over time. Uh, but we have been looking at it as both risk on and risk off. Uh, and I can tell you when we first uh, when we first learned that in 2015, uh, when we took our first position in uh, Bitcoin via GBTC, Bitcoin was about two hundred and fifty dollars. And many people were making fun of us at the time, thinking, oh, they're they're new. We had just started our funds in October of 14. Oh, they're new. They're just trying to gain attention. This is a marketing gimmick. And so we were really on the spot. First of all, we had done a lot of research. We didn't think uh, we thought there was real investment merit, but we were watching like a hawk its moves. And it, back then, uh, Greece was threatening to leave the European Union. And every time there was a flare up, uh, you know, and, and a fear of another European sovereign debt crisis, Bitcoin inched up. And so we've been looking at it as both a risk on and a risk off asset for quite some time. And the regional bank crisis last year uh, kind of uh, confirmed uh, our, that point of view that here Bitcoin um, more than doubled, I think more than doubled as regional banks were imploding. Across the globe, there's a notable decline in the value of several currencies, a trend that's receiving insufficient attention. Currency devaluation is also occurring in Western nations. It's happening at a slower rate, typically around 10 to 15 percent, which can make its effects less immediately noticeable. Amidst financial uncertainties, Bitcoin has emerged as a risk-off asset alternative and hedge against potential currency collapses. Kathy Wood recently offered an update on Bitcoin, emphasizing the significant impact of Bitcoin ETF. She indicated that this marks just the beginning for Bitcoin within the broader digital asset class, citing growing interest from institutional and sophisticated investors. In the video, Kathy also shares her insights on the Bitcoin having and why she believes it could propel Bitcoin's price to dollar $1.5 million per coin. I think uh, by all accounts, is going very well in in the aggregate. We're thrilled with uh, our our positioning um, and actually somewhat humbled, I must say. Um, uh, so I think we're number three um, if you take out grayscale. So um, very happy with that. Uh, very happy with the reception and. You know, I think the interesting thing that happened when you have 11 uh, ETFs approved at the same time, that's never happened before, uh, the amount of energy and uh, research communication that has gone out uh, around this spot Bitcoin ETF opportunity, um, you know, has been unmatched. And I think uh, I think it's done a great service uh, for for Bitcoin and digital assets generally, because this is just the beginning of a completely new asset class. I think there's been a, a lot of communication about what Bitcoin actually is in this new asset class uh, leading the charge. I know that our research team, I know Yassin is there with you, um, has done an amazing job, uh, not only in the last six months or year, uh, but we've had research extending back to two, 2014. Uh, and so, uh, and, and our first white paper in 2015 when we took our first exposure. Uh, and so we've been singing the praises of Bitcoin for a long time as a new asset class. So that's a start. But I do think there are some macro factors. I know Mike uh, mentioned this earlier. We're very focused on what's going on in the emerging markets uh, right now. I think um, with time, 
uh, many more people will understand that the Fed, with a 24-fold increase in interest rates over little more than a year's time, has absolutely shocked the financial system around the world. Now, many people are looking at very short-term lagging economic indicators here in the United States, primarily because the Fed is doing that. But if you look at other signals out there, there, um, there, there are um, um, signals that uh, not all is well in the world. I know Mike mentioned the, the NERA, <clears throat> the Nigerian NERA, um, which has devalued two, by two thirds since uh, last June. Now, Nigeria is one of the wealthiest countries, oil rich in, in Africa. And um, with a new administration that's become very business friendly, I think they thought they could let the currency float. And um, uh, and they found out, you know, that it has been very painful from a purchasing power point of view and from a wealth point of view. Um, we've seen the same uh, in Egypt that the the Egyptian devaluation was uh 40% at the beginning of March. I think many people were very surprised to, to see us buying when uh, Coinbase got the Wells notice and the stock price went down 20 or 30%. And then again, when the, the, the SEC sued them. Um, Coinbase is the most regulatory compliant exchange in the world. Uh, some of its competitors have gone out of business, FTX, of course, being an important one. Uh, Binance has had its share of issues as well, uh, CZ having to step aside and the fines and so forth. Um, and Coinbase is now going international, very importantly. Uh, and uh, I think as, as, uh, as the trusted um, company that it is here in the United States, I think it will catch hold. Uh, in uh, in the rest of the world. We're seeing it with an offshore derivatives um, exchange, which has taken off and is doing, I think, a lot better than a lot of other people expected. And then we've got base, uh, you know, they've uh, got an underlying protocol, which is generating organic demand with millions and millions of people already on it. Uh, compared to and and you know it doesn't have its own token like FTT or BNB, uh, it's truly organic demand. So uh, I think it's got a lot going for it. And again, you know, it's a, a great way to capitalize on a new asset class that um, that is going to create a new class of asset managers. We're all going to become power users uh, as as we participate in this ecosystem. We're not going to be you know as much the I mean, we call ourselves an active manager, but uh, as you say, we, you know, buy and hold a stock if we really like it. Uh, we'll get to do a lot more in this ecosystem as, uh, as an asset manager. So that's pretty exciting. For the first time, uh, the, the, the supply growth of Bitcoin, uh, it, as it drops from 1.9% per year, to roughly 0.9% uh, per year um, come April, uh, it's going. It's hitting an important milestone. Um, the the supply of uh, gold has been growing very long term, on average one percent. So now, I mean, it's just marginally, but it is below the su supply growth uh, of gold. So. Um, we're, we're trying to use that um, to uh, help people understand a lot of the reason that gold became such an, a successful asset class is because the supply growth was fairly controlled, especially relative to uh, money growth out there in various regimes, in, including our own. Um, and uh, and so I think I, I don't see any reason why the having won't be won't cause the same dynamic that it has in, in the previous cycles, especially as we're going out there with that message. Um, it doesn't happen right away, April and boom, uh, and it, it usually doesn't happen that way. So maybe they'll develop some impatience. But um, uh, we think that it. Um, 
it emphasizes one of the core features of Bitcoin and the reason it is uh, a, a risk off asset as well as a risk on asset.